woman, birth, death, infinity. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Your Health Radio and Television Program on the radio at AM 1240 KNRY and Cable Television Channel 24 and on the web at www.ampmedia.org. Join our rotating host and their informative guests live every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The purpose of the Your Health Radio and Television program is to help get, make, and keep listeners and viewers like you healthy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with the program. Hello, and welcome to the Your Health Radio and Television program. I'm Emily Shelto, Associate Public Information Officer at the Monterey County Health Department. I'll be your host today, and just and, and about every third uh, Monday of the month, I'll be with you as well. Today we have a pretty full guest lineup prepared to give you some valuable info and insight that can help you improve your health. In light of November being National Lung Cancer Awareness Month and, uh, and this Thursday's upcoming November 18th Great American Smokeout, We've prepared a, a program for you with local experts that, and we'll be discussing smoking cessation. At the beginning of this hour, we'll hear from, we'll, we'll hear from the Monterey County uh, Health Department Deputy Health Officer, Dr. Lisa Hernandez, to get a nice simple breakdown of some of the physical problems that may be encountered from smoking. And then around 20 after, we'll chat about personal cessation and the benefits of quitting smoking with Ms. Ida Corby, respiratory care practitioner and smoking cessation counselor from the Kick the Nick program at CHOMP. And finally, around 4.40ish, we'll welcome our final guest, Mr. Gonzalo Coronado, the tobacco control program coordinator at the Monterey County Health Department. He and I will be tackling some of the community environmental smoke, tobacco smoke issues, as well as other related policies and practices. How does that sound, everyone? Good? Good. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to spend the next hour discussing these. These guys right here. For all you out there in Radioland, I'm holding up the ball and chain for some 47 million Americans, a primary instigator for high-risk sexual behavior and alcohol and drug use, and the 100% preventable leading cause of death worldwide, none other than a box of cigarettes. Here to talk with me about these deadly products nicknamed cancer sticks is Dr. Lisa Hernandez, the Deputy Health Officer at the Monterey County Health Department. Welcome Dr. Hernandez and thanks again for joining me today. Thanks for having me Emily. So let's just get down right to the heart of the matter. Why do people smoke? Well there's lots of reasons why people smoke. Um, I can name a couple for you right now. One is advertising. It used to be um, that people were smoking regularly on TV, in movies, there were commercials, uh, there was a famous Joe Camel that some of you may remember. Um, that is not as uh, common anymore. They're more, we've controlled cigarette advertising and um, tobacco advertising, but it still exists and it's a little more crafty now where uh, tobacco industry has gone to giveaways, coupons so you can get cool um, items such as uh, uh, camping stuff, camping stuff from the dollars on the back of the cigarette e box. Exactly, Seems. exactly. So they're really looking at trying to um, advertise in a different way and almost kind of put a spin of the healthy part of it. We care about you. You know, we're a tobacco uh, supplier, but we care about your health. So that is still um, a cause advertising uh, to whether it's children or, or young adults for smoking. Uh, the other reason why people smoke is boredom, actually. It kind of, uh, smoking, once you start smoking, you get a feeling of satisf satisfaction um, that kind of fills your boredom and um, it replaces that, quote, emptiness. Another reason why people smoke is uh, a phenomenon called social smoking. Hmm. So people smoke um, at parties, at gatherings, um, to kind of start up conversation. It relaxes you. We'll talk a little bit about the um, physical effects of smoking in a, a little bit, but it um, really does li link to um, the social phenomenon of smoking in a group, um, oftentimes linked with um, alcohol consumption, so drinking at a party, it kind of loosens up um, your inhibitions to be more social. So those are the biggest reasons why people start smoking. 
And then once you start smoking, you kind of get hooked. Um, one of the main ingredients is, is nicotine, and that is a pretty addictive uh, substance. Wow, so I can see that if I was bored at a party and somehow looking at a magazine with cigarette ads, how things might not be very good for me at all at that moment. Um, so those are some of the reasons why people smoke. What is it about this, this nicotine that you mentioned that, is, um, that makes people addicted? Well, nicotine is a, a substance that's um, very similar to substances um, that are found in cocaine and caffeine. It, it works on your brain and on your nervous system, and it, it targets the areas that, that are focused on pleasure. So you get this feeling of euphoria or happiness from smoking right away, and then it, uh, it kind of gets you hooked. So you, you smoke, you puff the cigarette, and it goes straight to your brain pretty quickly, and you get this feeling of, this, of being relaxed and happy. And then it also works to kind of become addicted. So once you smoke the, and you fig finish a cigarette, that hits you right away, but then it wears off. And then you have this feeling of, oh, I need to feel uh, that again. And this is the actual chemical effects of the nicotine. And it then it, it kind of uh, makes people want to keep smoking either right away, so a chain smoker who smokes um, one cigarette behind the other, or just continue smoking. And um, it's very addictive. Um, it's just as addictive as um, cocaine and some of the other drugs. The other thing is that um, it, you have withdrawal symptoms. So once you stop smoking, uh, it's very hard to kick the habit. About 70% of people who stop smoking uh, start smoking again. And that's because withdrawal kind of stinks. You get irritable, you're moody, you, uh, you can't sleep, you can get headaches, so all those things kind of make it tough for people to stop smoking. Even though, and I know someone else will talk about kicking the habit later, even though 70% of people do um, fail um, s smoking cessation, they should, that doesn't mean you shouldn't stop smoking. That's the doctor hat of me coming out, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, thank you for that. That's definitely, it sounds like from what you've just told us, uh, continuing to smoke would not and not be a good idea. Yeah, and that's the other thing about addiction is that one of the things about an addict is that you, people who are addicted to smoking in this case or tobacco uh, know that it's wrong for you, but they can't stop. That's got to weigh in on the mind probably quite a bit. Yeah. And all those things that you mentioned too, not being able to sleep, being stressed out, being irritated, what a more perfect time to smoke, you know, and that's probably why the cycle continues. Yeah, yeah. So. What, other than becoming addicted and having these, you know, less than desirable qualities, this is Mr. Gross Mouth, he has a couple less than desirable teeth in his mouth, it looks like. Uh, for the radio audience, we're showing up a, uh, a little diagram of a mouth that has been severely detrimented um, with various uh, cancers of the gums and, and, the, and the tongue and whatnot, um, likely from smoking. So what else does smoking do to a smoker? I see we have a couple items on the table here that are lungs. One is black and one is not black. Right. Perhaps you can speak to why this happens? Yeah, well, first of all, as you mentioned, smoking affects every organ of the body. So you mentioned the teeth and the tongue and the mouth. So you can get cavities, you can get problems with your gums, and, and those are the things you can see right away. When you see a smoker, you can see the yellowing of the teeth. And you talk about the lungs, and there's a pink um, healthy lung, and then there's the black gray lung. And those are the things that we can't see that our, um, that our smoking is doing, our tobacco use is doing. And what it does to the lung is that it can affect um, the airways of the, air, of the whole, from the mouth all the way down. There are big airways and small airways, and it can damage those airways to cause you to have things like asthma or problems breathing where your lung capacity, the amount of air that your lungs can breathe in and out, gets smaller. And you can have problems right away, or you can have problems later on in life. I um, see. It takes a while for these, these um, airways to become sort of restricted yeah, and, and clogged. Uh -huh. It kind of reminds me of 
um, whenever you hear about lower your cholesterol um, because you know arteries in your heart may become clogged with various things it sort of reminds me of that yeah totally so and of course it causes lung cancer you bring up uh, cholesterol and your arteries so let's move to the heart the heart um, and the blood vessels in the body also get affected by cigarette smoking, where it does also do the same sort of thing by narrowing or you know, making the uh, size of the arteries, the blood vessels in your body smaller. So it can cause you to have high blood pressure, increase in heart rate almost immediately, and it also causes things later on in life like high blood pressure. The other thing it can do is cause you to have atherosclerosis, which is a the medical term for um, blood, um, high cholesterol deposits in your, in your blood vessels. So it can cause the blood vessels to get smaller that way, not just constricting in size, but also getting blocked. Oh, okay. And that can cause you to have um, uh, problems with heart, um, coronary artery disease and also stroke later on as well. Oh, those things sound pretty major. Yeah. So that's just talking about heart um, and lungs, and you talked about teeth. Can I tell you a couple other bad things? Please. You ready? <laughs> yes, please. So some of the other things are, it can cause like nine cancers. I had to count them all because I was looking at the list and I couldn't believe it. It can cause, of course, lung cancer. We talked a little bit about teeth and the um, mouth, ca it can cause you mouth cancer, tongue cancer of your tongue, of your voice box, of your um, esophagus, so of your um, the pipe that brings your food down. It can cause you to have cancer for women of your uterus, of your cervix, which is also part of your uterus. There's so many different cancers. It can also cause um, a, type, a, a certain type of leukemia. So there's a really long list um, of cancers alone. And then there are other things that it can cause um, for children like asthma and um, problems with chronic bronchitis, which is like a, a, a lung, you can have lung infections and wheezing. Oh, is that kind of like COPD, just to slip it in there? I've always mm -hmm. heard, oh, mm -hmm. this can cause COPD, yep. chronic obstructive. Pulmonary disease. Pulmonary disease. Exactly, so those things can happen to kids as well as adults. The, I would say that chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is, is what we get in later, later in life, um, where you may be needing to use an oxygen tank. So a lot of the times when you see someone carting around a tank of a oxygen with the, the tubes in their nose, chances are they have um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and it may have been caused by smoking or, or exposure to smoke, and we'll talk about that later, I guess. Definitely, we will have someone um, later on the program talk about uh, uh, secondhand smoke, and we might talk about that too here. Yeah. So we've kind of gone over some of the, the harms and um, some of the bad things that smoking can, can um, do to you. Let's talk about the good. Oh, there is no good. Okay, <laughs> let's continue talking about the bad. So how does smoking cause cardiovascular disease and, and respiratory disease? Were you mentioning that? And yes. So how do those things link? Because I hear these terms cardiovascular disease and it's bad for your lungs and your heart but we can all pretty much assume that if it's bad for your lungs and your heart, you're probably gonna end up with a cardiovascular respiratory or respiratory. Right, so what happens is, is that the, the, the smoke can, or the tobacco can cause damage to your blood vessels in your heart directly, and that can cause problems with just the heart getting the blood that it needs to work. So you can get a heart attack, and if or if not, your blood is not being pumped out to all the other organs in your heart, so, I mean in your body. So that means it can affect your kidneys, it can affect um, your, the circulation in your legs. I so see. it can affect all different parts of your body, but directly in the heart it can cause um, that there's not enough blood just flowing in the actual muscle of the heart. It can also cause problems in the lungs because the, the um, the tubes, the breathing tubes of the lungs, and also the big ones and the small ones get blocked and damaged, and you're not being able to breathe, move the air in, in and out of your body the right way, and you're not giving the oxygen to your body to also work in the blood to have the organs work. So, so I see. Those are the connection. You need the oxygen to come in, mm -hmm. and then you need the oxygen to go into the blood, and then you need the heart to be working right 
to move the blood through the whole body. So great. So yeah, I hear these terms a lot. And, and because of the advertising and, and, and all the media around cigarettes and smoking that you know, we're so used to, you hear these terms, you know, COPD, asthma, chronic this, mm -hmm. obstructive this, and you don't really know exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. But I think you summed it up really nicely for us and, and made it really easy to understand. Um, so what we talked about some of the other cancers and diseases that smoking can cause. Um, I mentioned this secondhand smoke business earlier. What exactly is secondhand smoke? So secondhand smoke, a lot of times people think of it as, as one thing. It actually, there's two parts to it. There's uh, side, I mean, remember the words, it's side seam smoke and mainstream smoke. So mainstream smoke is the, cig the smoke that comes off the cigarette itself. So if you have a cigarette on an ashtray, the smoke that's coming off the cigarette is the mainstream smoke. And then there's this, oh no, I got it backwards. backwards. Sorry about that. Uh, so the mainstream smoke is a smoke, that's the side stream smoke, the one that's coming off the cigarette itself. Okay. Then the mainstream smoke is the smoke that's coming out of a smoker's mouth or nose after they smoke. I see. So there's those two parts that make up secondhand smoke because that's what, what someone, say I'm the smoker, that you're going to be exposed to. And actually, it's the side stream smoke, the smoke from the cigarette itself, that actually may be more harmful to a person, causing uh, certain health problems. Um, actually, secondhand smoke and the side stream smoke especially has been considered, um, is on the list of carcinogens, the, car uh, the cancer-causing agents um, that we've uh, listed in the United States. So just being in a room with a smoke or, or being exposed to smoke causes, increases your risk for having certain cancers as well. Probably the same cancers as those we mentioned for the smokers yep. themselves. So we've got mainstream smoke coming at you, side stream smoke coming at you, and within that smoke from either you know the cigarette itself or, or the mouth of the smoker, mm -hmm. um, or the nose I suppose, or wherever from the smoker, there's various carcinogens. And the same carcinogens that are in cigarettes that are harmful, that are gonna cause some of the same um, health problems that a smoker has. What are some of these other health effects? Are there, um, from secondhand smoke, are there, is there anything different that we haven't mentioned yet, or it's just? Well, some of the things that actually ha may ha that happen with um, smokers can happen for um, people that are exposed to secondhand smoke that I really wanna make sure I talk about, and that is um, preterm labor, and uh, low birth weight babies. So babies, so say you're a smoker and you're pregnant, you are at risk for being, uh, having a baby early or having a low birth weight baby. Same as if say your partner is a smoker and you're pregnant, you're um, at increased re risk just by living with a smoker of having a baby who is low birth weight. And that is really important um, to, to know that uh, it's not just smoking, it's being exposed to the smoker. The other thing when I'm talking about kids and moms that's important is SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. That's what the SIDS stands for. And a lot of times we don't know what causes um, babies to die in the first year of life um, w without any known cause, but we've linked it to um, exposure to secondhand smoke. So that's another reason why when I used to be in practice, I would tell moms, and their partners and family members not to, to smoke. This is the time for the whole family to get healthy because it makes um, for a healthy pregnancy as well as a healthy um, childhood for that n new baby coming into life. So uh, SIDS is one. It, kids that are exposed to secondhand smoke have a higher uh, chance for having ear infections and asthma as well as um, bronchitis, the lung infection that, uh, that is in the upper part of your lungs. Wow, so a smoker can really do quite a bit of damage not only to themselves, but to their partner or close family members, mm -hmm. and especially if that partner or close family member is pregnant, you've got another little body in there that, you know, it could suffer from low birth weight you mentioned, or preterm labor. Preterm labor, and um, we also have SIDS in there once the child is born, sudden infant death syndrome, Wow, so smoking, all in all, it sounds like you're painting a pretty, you know, bad picture of it. And I think you're, you're painting a true picture too. Yeah. So <clears throat> one real quick question I have for you. I've heard smoking um, can cause breast cancer. 
Yeah, you know, there's a debate about that right now in terms of whether uh, secondhand smoke can, is it secondhand smoke or? Uh, oh, secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke can cause breast cancer. Um, basically, what we see is there's different um, studies out there that show yes or maybe. Um, be the biggest argument against saying that secondhand smoke doesn't cause uh, breast cancer is that smokers themselves aren't at an increased risk for getting breast cancer, but what we see is that um, we've already talked about the fact that secondhand smoke has those two different components and the side stream smoke has higher, you may be exposed to higher levels of, of, of the carcinogens, the cancer causing agents. So that's where we're seeing more and more data supporting that, that you may be at increased risk for getting breast cancer if you're exposed to secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke. Well, that's so interesting. Thank you so much again, Dr. Hernandez, for talking with us today. You've been really informative. Um, so at the moment, we're going to take a short break. Uh, not a smoke break, no. but uh, I'm your host, Emily Shelto, and this is Your Health Radio and Television Program. We'll be back in just a moment.